there's no silver bullet solutions, but whatever you do, have a plan to hold on to your good people because they're, they're more valuable than they've ever been in the current environment. Welcome to the Business Behind Your Business, conversations to help your business grow and thrive. Hi, I'm Paul Sweeney, founder of Predium Solutions, chartered accountants and certified business advisors, hosting the Business Behind Your Business. Welcome to the Business Behind Your Business and Today we have with us Paul Cripps from PK People Solutions and Harry Nathu from Keystone Active Learning. And look, it's great to have these two guys back on the, on the podcast. And we're going to be looking at a question that we're, we're being asked in a number of areas and we're seeing this raised as an issue by a lot of business owners at the moment. And that is the issue of how do we uh, manage our talent, manage our team in this lockdown or remote working environment. And look, there are practical tools, and, but really what we're discovering is there's a very much a people side to this. So we've, we've, we've got access to very experienced professionals who work in this environment. So Paul from PK People Solutions and Harry from, from Keystone Active Learning. Gentlemen, welcome back to the podcast. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Thank Thanks you for Paul. having us here, Paul. Great. So... Look, I guess really, uh, Harry, let's start by saying, well, what is talent management? What, what are we looking at when we're talking about talent management? I think talent management really embraces the whole life cycle of, of you know, of, of an employee's engagement with the business. And, you know, we focus really on, on everything from, you know, the skills that the organization needs to, to sourcing and attracting the right talent for them, selecting the right, then selecting the right people, and then going through uh, the stages of talent development. So when you hire people, it is also important to, to understand where the gaps are. They come with a lot of skills, but not all skills might be suitable for that particular environment. And you try to identify what those gaps are and then go through a process of uh, identifying and, and filling those gaps. So really, talent management is, is you know, living in, the, in, in this era of digital disruption and shifting workforce, we are moving into a hybrid model of, of working flexibly. Some days and other days, you know, you, you, you're going to work at the office. That's, that's what I think is, is probably going to happen. And so, you know, talent management is really a strategic approach to attracting, developing and retaining high quality workforce and optimizing their performance. So really, as, as the company grows, the skills needed also evolve. And as the nature of work continues to change, especially in the current environment that we're in, the mindset of management also needs to change to one of enablement and empowering their workforce to be creative and innovative. So, you know, building a competitive workforce really requires continuous learning and development and optimizing the performance. And that is what, you know, what I do and what my partners in our business do is to really focus on on talent management strategy, talent acquisition, and talent development. Mm -hmm. And I I guess really... If we ignore the fact that we're now in a virtual environment and we just look at that from a, a purely a management point of view or a talent management point of view, it would be fair to say, Paul Cripps, that you are often brought into the scene when this talent or the team management falls apart, there is an issue. Is that correct? It can be the case. I think I always say <laughs> prevention is better than uh, cure and actually having a strategy up front is a lot better than uh, when when things are, are starting to, to, to fall apart because Quite frankly, sometimes it's uh, sometimes it's it, it's far too late. But look, there's always there's always about if it's far too late, it's always about you know plugging the problem right now, and then then coming up with a plan to make sure things are better for the future. Because I think you know the, the point that you both make there, well, Harry made as well, is that you know this hybrid working model is without doubt with us to stay. You know, work from home was always starting to get more and more momentum over the last 10, 15 or so years. And 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 this, the current situation has just has just accelerated that. And and certainly, I found that being brought in when there is a problem, 
as soon as I get the client to actually recognize that this is not just a short-term problem that's brought around as a result of the pandemic, as soon as they can get to the mindset that, okay, so this isn't going to go away and we're all back to normal next week, the, the better chance they've got of putting the right things in place to make sure that they're better start for the future. So are these yeah. problems expanded during during lockdown? Or are, they, are they worse or, oh, sorry, harder to deal with in, in this situation? They can be. I, I think that certainly for, for managers that perhaps didn't have the right kind of core skill set in the past in terms of managing people you know, from within that were right in front of them, if they're managing people remotely, that's another another element that becomes a lot harder. And so I think certainly in some cases it's it, it's accelerated the, the issue. But in other cases is that when you've got yeah, businesses that are actually doing the right things and, and, and I guess doing the real the real basics of making sure that there's a there's a good check in that's taking place between the, the the manager and the employee. There's regular ongoing conversation. There are ways that they continue to engage people within the team and, and across the team. They're the businesses that are that are thriving and surviving well in this situation, as opposed to others that yeah perhaps are still struggling to to adapt. Yeah, and I think Paul, you make an important point. I think one of the things that that is so important, especially in this environment of remote working, that I think the number one factor for me is trust. Yes, right. Yes. Trust has to be both both sides. Yes. There's got to be trust of, of, of the employee and there's got to be trust of, of the manager or, or the superior or the CEO of the company. And, you know, while more and more companies are looking at monitoring their staff and coming and using new technology to see whether the staff are actually at work, I think one of the biggest mistakes that, that companies make today is that the focus is on input. Mm. Right, mm-hmm. so they're focusing on input mm-hmm. to the extent mm-hmm. where they're mm-hmm. saying that okay, this is uh, let us see, you know, how long this person is logged in on his computer at work, right? <laughs> Instead of focusing on output and say let let's look at productivity, what is this person delivering? Whether the person is working at night or working during the day, what is the output? And let's measure the person based on output. And I think that is one of the biggest downfalls that we find in businesses. And that, in fact, causes a lot of stress, anxiety, and and distrust, and all of those things come in. You know, I was talking to this client of ours in Melbourne, and and, and, and she's having issues with staff. And, and she says, you know, I'm, I'm just not getting the productivity from them. And I said, look, putting them onto a course doesn't solve your problem, right? It is, it is a mindset thing, both from the leadership of the organization as well as from the people. And I said the, the important things here is about trust, is about transparency. It's about rather commun- over-communicating than communicating less, right? So if, if staff who are working remotely know what is happening in the company because the management of the company may be changing direction because of what's happening in the current environment. And if that information is not shared with the staff, the staff are focusing on what they were doing back in the, in the, in the office environment. But COVID has changed things, and management may be looking at a different strategy. If that strategy is not communicated, there's a, there's a disconnect, Right. There's a disconnect between the employee and 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 the, and, and the employer. So, trust to me and transparency is is number one on the list. It's so 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 important if you want to get a workforce that is going to work and function efficiently in the setup of remote working. I may just like to just share, I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but I just like to share something. Gartner did a survey earlier this year, they they took a poll, and 90% of the respondents said that allowing employees to work remotely at least part of the time, right? Flexibility on when people work. Now, that's a very important one. 65% of the people responded to that particular uh, topic. And then additional employee benefits, whether it's mental health benefits, childcare, leave, et cetera, 44% of the respondents felt that that was important. 
and then changes to productivity monitoring for remote employees. Right. So again, that question about input output mm. comes in mm. as mm. to when you're doing my performance review, what is it that you that you're looking for? And I think that whole performance review thing can can be can actually be a very good experience for both parties if companies actually communicate regularly with their staff. Mm -hmm. right. No, absolutely, Harry. And I think that you know you, the, the Gartner uh, research you, you quote there, and I think I did come across that quite recently as well. But there's uh, there's so much other research out there as well that supports exactly what you're saying there in terms of you know we've got through a situation where you know people for some time have probably been wanting the ability to work more you know more flexibly working greater time remotely. And as and, and the point you, you made there, Harry, as well about the whole issue with trust and, and measuring people on, you know, basically on inputs, not outputs. Yeah. That takes you back probably as it does to you as well, a number of years ago about having that that debate in organizations and and, uh, and hearing comments as I would have heard at the time, probably 10, 15 years ago around, well, how can I know somebody's doing their, their job if I can't actually see them? And yeah. I think that uh, the, the, the plus point is that I think we've, yeah, we, we're starting to accelerate out of that very quickly in the last two years. And I've certainly come across, you know, uh, you know, perhaps people that are a little bit more cynical that have now come around. I've certainly got one client that, you know, would have never thought about having people working remotely. And now they're, you know, 100% of their of their you know, operational team is, is now working remotely, which just wouldn't have been heard of, you know, only 18 months ago. So there's been some real good, you know, shift in, in, in mindsets here. And I think that the other one point you made, Harry, which I want to totally applaud you on as well, is that the point about when there's changes in the business to keep people up to date on that, the amount of oh, times yeah. that can be lost. And, and if you lose, if an employee doesn't connect with what the business purpose is and isn't aligned to that, it's a recipe for things going backwards without any doubt. Yeah. I think yeah, that, and, 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 and that is, you know, look, communication is, is, is one of those things that is a problem in, in most companies today. Mm -hmm. Even at, at, at a managerial mm -hmm. level, you find mm -hmm. that managers just don't communicate to their staff. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. especially with remote staff now, uh, you know, it's not only communicating really about the work, it's also communicating about just contacting each individual mm. and asking mm. them how they are, how they're going. Yeah. Right? yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. we are all living in, in, in a very, very stressful environment. We live in times of so much of uncertainty. There's so much of ambiguity, right? You know, the, uh, you probably heard of the acronym VUCA, right? And, and, yes. and, and, and VUCA is, is, yes. is so relevant today than at any other time. In, in, in our lives, I think. Actually, Harry, I don't find... It's funny, actually. I've heard a bit more from coming from overseas. I, I find a lot of people in Australia haven't heard it. So you might just want to describe that because I, I just it's one of those ones I don't hear it as much in Australia that I, I do when yeah, I hear... So, so VUCA is an acronym that stands for uh, volatility, uncertainty, right? So complexity, and then ambiguity. So that's, that's VUCA. And if you look at each, each of those words in that acronym, right, it applies right now mm -hmm. in the environment mm -hmm. that we are, we are living in. Right? There's, there's so much of ambiguity coming from the government in what mm -hmm. you can do and can't do, mm -hmm. where you can go, where you can't go. Mm -hmm. uh, the rules are changing on a daily basis. Right? That brings about so much of uncertainty in the workplace because you don't know whether you're going to have to go back to work, whether your, your, your company is uh, going to be receptive to a hybrid model or, or allow you to, to work full time from home. Mm, mm, There's talk mm. like what Google has done recently, mm. that if you want to work from home, take a 50% pay cut. Mm. Right? Yes, look, there, 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 there are uh, the downsides to, to working from home because some sectors, obviously, people take advantage of that, that, that model. I know of a guy who I interviewed a couple of weeks ago for an IT role. And I said, look, this role requires you, once once the lockdown is over, it requires you to, to be in the office. And he said, why? And I said, because what this company is developing is IP sensitive. 
They're developing a whole algorithm that is an AI tool, which requires people to be there and work on, on, on this as part of a team. And he said, no, I will never work in an office environment. So I said, why? Why are you so adamant about that? And he says, because I can manage my time quite effectively. And this way I can take multiple contract jobs as well. Mm. <laughs> and I, I'll go to, Harry, look, you've just raised one of the fears that's being expressed is that if my staff or my team are working remotely, then how do I know that they're working on what I'm employing them to do and not doing some other business activity on my time? And that's that's one of the fears that's being expressed. How do, how do you manage that kind of s- scenario? Yeah, look, uh, that, that whole, that, that, it's a very good question, Paul. And, and there's a couple of elements to that uh, in my response to that question. And one is that the company has to clearly state what the expectation is. It's got to be absolutely clear that this is what I expect from you within a given time frame, right? Now, where companies go wrong is that they're still very much focused on time management, right? Time management today is not as important as energy management. And I'll tell you why. When you manage each one of us, our productivity levels varies during the day. We can't be productive every single minute of the working day, right? The days of nine to five are gone. So people might feel that they are more productive in the evenings. Mm. Right? There are some people who can work throughout the night because the kids are gone to bed and there's less distraction. Others may feel that I like to get up early in the morning and get down to work and clear my work maybe by lunchtime. Right? So it is more so important to manage your energy. Right? And by managing your energy and using that to be most productive during the, the times when you feel that's, that's, those are your hours, your, 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 your sweet spot, then that is when the work gets done. But it's so important for, for, for management to clearly state what is expected from, from the employee when they're working remotely. And I think a lot of that is not happening at this present time. There's this expectation that you're going to be doing this, that, and the other, but it hasn't been clearly spelled up. And, and, and I think when, when there's clarity in what you are seeking from your employees, then that helps to get, that, get them to, to complete those tasks within a given period. Now, when they do it, that's where the flexibility comes in. If you go down the, the, the hybrid model or you're going down to a work-from-home model, then it is so important that you leave that, decision to the employee because they know best how they're going to manage that. Again, the issue of trust does come into the whole equation because you wouldn't want your employee to be uh, double dipping sort of to, 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 to find another side gig as well and, and, and using your time to, you know, to earn an additional income. But uh, yeah, that, that that goes down really based on, on, on the kind of, of, of relationship that the employee and employee have. Hmm. Um, Paul, I don't know if you want to add anything to that. Yeah, no, I think to me, I think you're right, Harry. I think it's that the monitoring is key and it's what they need to do, how they need to do it. In a lot of cases, when doesn't matter. There will obviously there are scenarios, there are some businesses where when's important. I, uh, I might just, you know, talk about a scenario there that, that's come up quite recently in terms of, you know, I've certainly got one client where the when's important because it's a contact center. So, you know, the when there is important, but the, the advantage to, you know, that sort of business has, it has a lot of monitoring. So there are a lot of monitoring tools. So that way, you know, even if somebody's working remotely, if there is an issue and it can get picked up, you know, can get picked up very quickly. But look, for, for the majority of people working remotely, though, know, you know, it's going to be a case of, well, it comes back to what uh, Harry said earlier on. It's, it's about measuring in terms of the output. So long as you're clear in terms of what needs to be achieved and perhaps how, the when in some cases will be, will, will be less important. I yeah. think, look, what, one of the things I'm hearing is that 
we need to have these expectations clearly stated and communicated. Yep. And, and I think a lot of business owners in this virtual environment are struggling because they didn't have these in place when they were in a, an office-based environment. And, you know, they didn't communicate those expectations up front. And, and I think this comes right back to our hiring process to begin with. So that's the best time to establish those expectations right before you commence. So as you were saying, Harry, about the, the guy you were interviewing for that IT role, well, if, the, if the expectation is there that he has to be physically present and he's not willing to commit to that, then we need to address that right at the beginning rather than offer them the job and then say, hey, oh, later, yeah. come oh, into yeah. the office or you're fired. No, we can't do it that way. But I think yeah. how, do, how do we address this situation where um, so – you know, we may not have set those expectations before. We're now in this virtual situation. We, we, we're hoping we're at the, the seeing the, the light at the end of the tunnel, but we're still going to have this virtual environment. What do we need to do as employers or business owners to to probably, I guess, some get some framework around these expectations and, and how we communicate with employees? Are there some practical things that we should be doing now? Yeah, I think you know you, you've got you've got your employees right now there. So the rules for them are going to be you're going to have to change because they, these are the people who have been working in an office-based environment. But with them, what you've got to do is you've got to set firstly you've got to set very clear expectations of what what you expect them to do. You may want to even set you know working hours for them. You want you want to say look you know. We want to give you guys a, a work-life balance. These are the hours that we want you to put in. Now, it could be that um, you, you want them to work a nine-to-five job, or it could be that, you know, I, I need you to put in seven hours a day or seven and a half hours of work a day. All right. Sometimes, it, depending on, on, on the role, there might not be that flexibility because you are working in a collaborative team and you need other people all on board at the same time. So it, it, you might not have that flexibility, but that is something that has to be clearly stated. All right. The other thing is that it's so important for managers to check in. You've got to check in with your staff. You've got to be able to have uh, a weekly huddle. You know, some, some companies even choose to have a, a quick 10-minute huddle every morning and, and just see what's, what's on your plate for the day so you know what the expectations are for that day from, from each person, right? But over and above that, it is so important for management, either your direct manager or someone above him, to actually just give each employee a call, a five-minute call, you know, not every day. Go through all your employees, do maybe two or three calls a day or five, ten minutes each, and don't talk about work. Just check in on how they are. How can I help you? Is there anything that you need? Is your family okay? You know, and those things are, mean a lot to employees today. Because, uh, I mean, if you look at the, the, the articles that are coming out and even on TV and in, in the papers, mental health issue is becoming a major, major problem. Mm -hmm. right. And employees want to feel that management does care. When they have that feeling that management has my back, they will deliver. They will be productive because they feel they are valued. Even in times like this, it is so important that companies continue to develop their staff. All these are important things to, to keep your staff working even if they uh, in, in the current remote environment. And, and, and putting them onto courses doesn't have to be long courses. Microbyte learning courses, that's the way the world is moving today. It's short, short courses. That's what we're doing with one client in Melbourne at the moment. I was telling Paul earlier that uh, we're currently delivering for this client and, we, uh, and we're doing one-hour uh, programs and we go through five, six groups in a day. You know, for us, it's about repeating the same thing five times. But fortunately, there's three of us in the in, in, in the team, so you know we're able to, to 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 do that. But and and people value that. You know, like one of our clients told us last week that I've given them all the technical skills that they need to do their job. I think where we are at right now is that they need more of of the people skills, the soft skills. 
That's what they need. Because these are the issues we're having. And I said, let's let's hear. And and one communication, top of the list. All right. Question put to us is how do we communicate remotely with our with our staff? All right. Which is the best way we should be doing that? Then managing time, problem solving. How can we find other creative ways in which we can solve problems? Now, for all these things, there are short causes that, you know, short, sharp, to the point causes that gives them some direction based on what their company is. So we, you know, we are very good at customizing these programs and we can do that. But these are the things that companies are also looking for. How can we become more creative? How can we be more innovative? And to do that requires you to empower your staff. Right. I told this, the CEO of this company, I told her, I said, forget about managing people. It's no longer about managing people. It's about leading people. And when you lead people, you empower them. You give them the opportunity to come up with the ideas. You don't tell them what to do. You ask them which is the best way for us to do this. And that way you get buying from your team. Right? They feel valued. And that's what people are looking for. They're looking for the opportunity to continue to learn and develop. They understand that the world is moving at such a tremendous pace that the jobs that they might be doing today might not be relevant tomorrow. And so people want to learn new skills and keep up to date with their current skills so that, you know, and upskill so that they can continue to be relevant not only to the organization, but probably to the broader industry. And companies have to do that. And then obviously mental well-being is so, so, so important. Can't stress enough about that because that is playing out right now in our communities. We hear all sorts of things happening. This is a major problem. Parents are finding it tough, especially when they've got school-going kids, how to manage the kids and also be at work. My daughter-in-law is a, is, is a child care educator and, and she comes and tells us some of the stories that go on that she hears from the parents. You know, so there is, there is this, this, you know, requirement from management to take mental health very, very seriously for the staff. And then, you know, offer, offer, offer your staff some time off. I don't know if you saw that article that came out, I think, this morning or yesterday. Nike. Nike has decided to give all their corporate staff a week off for mental health, fully paid. Now, whether that includes their retail staff, I'm not so sure about that, but it does say corporate staff. So corporate staff get a week off, and if they're not doing it for the retail staff, then that, that, that doesn't say much about Nike. It, it, uh, it's, it's like having uh, two different policies for, for people working for the same company. So that's... Uh, bit of an issue. And then, obviously, where technology is needed to fill the gaps, you know, offer your staff that opportunity to see how technology can help them. Most importantly is, is really if there's changes, strategic changes at the top, that needs to be communicated down the line to the staff. And as I said earlier, that it's better to over-communicate than to under-communicate. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, and no, I think, uh, look, Harry, I think you've, you've made some excellent points there. I think that uh, you know, I've seen some, some of those play out in, uh, you know, in, in uh, with clients that, that I work with. You know, can't help stress enough the, the points you make about the regular check-ins being so key, you know, regular huddles, perhaps amongst whether it be a team or a leadership team. I've seen those working well. And, and, you know, and also you having those uh, performance expectations about what needs to happen you know, is key. I'm just going to make one more point about mental health. Is that so okay? I think that there's coming. I think it's a case of uh, you say, Paul, sometimes I come in and I might come into when there's issues there. And that is the case sometimes. And, uh, you know, I mean, one of the things that was well, a couple of things I think out there that sometimes small, smaller businesses may not be aware of, but they may feel that something like an employee assistance program is just out there for the big players. You know, there are employee assistance programs that are out there for, for smaller businesses as well. 
and and some very affordable solutions that, uh, that I help my clients with. So, you know, so there's really you know an opportunity there for any business to put to put some something something in place there. I think just one other thing, just in terms of tips, I'd say as well is that it's really important not to ignore this because what I'm seeing happen on the other end is then what's happening is businesses that aren't putting the right tools in place is that turnover is very easy to happen. And, and, the, and the, the article that, that Harry alluded to earlier on, I think, goes into that point as well in terms of businesses that aren't adapting in the current environment or experiencing turnover. And one of the things I hear, and that's not just within Sydney, it's it's even within Australia, I even hear it from the US and the UK as well, is that you know finding good people at the moment, particularly with borders closed, yeah. is becoming yeah. incredibly hard. So hold on. All I can say is that have a plan in place to hold on to your good people. And and some of the basics we've talked about are a framework. Different things work for different people. We want to say yeah. there's no silver bullet solutions, but whatever you do, have a plan to hold on to your good people because they're they're more valuable than they've ever been in the current environment. Hmm. I mean, so I think yeah. we yeah. So, yeah, I think we started the conversation talking about managing. What do we need to manage our team remotely? But I think yeah. what I'm hearing is it's not so much about managing; it's about empowering your team to be effective given a changed yeah. set of circumstances. And what we need to do to 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 achieve that is, is some of these things like making sure we communicate or over communicate, as Harry said and provide that trust, that transparency about what is actually happening in the, in the business and what the expectations are. So, Harry, did you want to just... Yeah, add, add? The, the other thing, you know, with that uh, transparency and trust is also in this environment is flexibility. Mm. Right? Flexibility is so important that, uh, you, you know, that management listens to their people. You know, as much as we say over-communicate, but you also need to listen. Listen to what your staff are, are, are telling you. And because we're working remotely, it's so difficult to, to really gauge body language from body language where the people are going through personal challenges. Mm. Right? And we tend to measure people because maybe things are not getting done on time and, and we come down hard on them, but we're not, we're not making the extra effort to find out what's really happening in their lives. And so it is important to, you know, to have that engagement with, with your staff. One-on-one -on -one is, 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 the, is the best way, in my opinion, to do that. Because when you, when you do it in a, in a group environment, not everybody wants to be transparent and say what they are personally going through. So it's important to have those one-on-one -on -one sessions. And, um, you know, tracking the workers' progress is one thing, but tracking really if there's any other challenges their body language the tone the way they, they 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 message each other in the team the way they write their emails sometimes things can get picked up from there that the person is going through some sort of anxiety or stress and 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 and, and may be coming a bit more aggressive in, in in their in their language trying to get information or trying to get things done and expect others to to do that, but those things are happening, all right. So, I think people need to and uh, management needs to understand that uh, flexibility is important. That you understand your people, help them because we're all going through something that we've never ever experienced before, and and so it requires all sides to you know have that understanding. Empathy, you know, leaders today have to have empathy. If, you, if you're not empathetic to your staff, they, they perceive you as being, you know, having a don't care attitude, that you, you are aggressive, that you are bullying, that you are harassing. While those things may not be the case, it could just be that the manager is having a certain level of expectation for work to get done. But it's important for that manager to have empathy and to have very, very good interpersonal skills. Because in this environment where you're communicating via phone or, or via Zoom, it is so important that the way they come across, their communication style that comes across is very, very important into the way the, the person receiving that information is going to perceive that information. Mm. Yeah, I think the, skills, the skill set of a good leader has never been more important as far as I'm concerned. And you, you highlight those those attributes very, very, very clear there, Harry. Yeah, look, we, we did, you know, we've got, the, we've got a client that we uh, signed up last year. And one of the things that we did 
was, and, and this was before COVID, right? So we didn't even know that COVID was going to happen, right? And, and, and we, we rolled out 135 motivational maps to gauge exactly what is motivating people at that point in their life. And a year later, this is about in March or April, we redid the motivational map. And it was amazing how people's motivation had shifted. And people now were looking more for security. Whereas previously they were looking for what's the next step up for me. They they were more goal-focused, more uh, futuristic. Now it's a case of, okay, I need to, I got to, secure what I have, right? And what do I need to keep myself relevant today? Mm. Right. So those are important things. Those are the type of tools that, that companies can look at and, and, and it's not expensive. You know, they can look at those type of things and say, well let's let's see that helps us to gauge what 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 the mood, what the temperature, what the you know, what what's people's motivation like. What, what is really driving them at this point in time? And that helps management to, to you know, like you say, let's try and be proactive and, 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 and help to not wait for the problem to become a major thing and then try to solve it. Let's, let's work towards these things now, as you said earlier, Paul. So th- those are the type of things that people can do. There's, there, there's a lot of things that companies can do. It just, it just needs... Many of them are not aware of these things, and many of them who are aware are not, not taking it too seriously. But that is something that they, they need to look at. Well, thank you, Harry and Paul. That's, that's been a really good discussion about some of the things we can do, not just to manage our team during this unusual situation, but how we can get, I guess, our team members more effectively engaged and, and, and looking at growing your employees, not just in terms of their, their skill level, but they're, 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 I guess they're well-rounded, they're all, all their skills needed. And you look, when we come out of this lockdown situation, we're going to have a changed environment, but the, the skills that people are acquiring in this situation are going to help moving beyond because you know, we're not going to go back to things exactly how they were. So a lot of good skills. And look, we've mentioned a lot of resources during this conversation and we're going to put links to those in the show notes and we're also going to put some links on the, on the, the website for the business behind your business.com. So go, head across to, to the website and check out some of the resources we've put up there from previous episodes as well. And, and look, if, you know, today we've answered a question that's been raised in a number of different forums and directly with us. But if you have a question you want specifically answered, you can, you can go to speakpipe.com forward slash the business behind your business and, and you can leave your question. We'll answer that on a future episode. But, it, you know, if you've got issues that you need assistance with in your business, um, reach out, ask us, and we'll, we'll try and find the, the right person to answer your question. But, uh, and Harry and Paul are available as well. So, Harry, what's the best way for people to contact you if they need uh, some more information? Uh, they can call me on my mobile, which is 0414-775-214, or they can email me at Harry dot. Nathu, N-A-T-H-O-O, at key, K-E-Y, A-C-T-L-E-A-R-N dot com. So it's harry.nathu at keyactlearn dot com. Great. Fantastic. And, and Paul Cripps, how can we get in contact with you? Yes. Thank you, Paul. Phone number uh, 0421. 404-365 and email is paul at uh, pk uh, p for paul k for kenneth pk people solutions that's all one word dot com dot au fantastic so we'll put links to those contact details in the show notes as well and uh, yeah look if you've missed an episode we've mentioned uh, a number of things in this in recent times dealing with extended covid crisis and lockdown situations and what businesses should be doing so so if you've missed an episode go back and 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 look those up and they're available in all the podcast players that 
uh, are common or you can go to the website and you'll be find all of those previous episodes there. So thank you for listening. Thank you, Paul and Harry, again. Always great to chat and thanks for sharing your expertise. And uh, look, for you listening, uh, we hope that this has helped you to continue to be positive about growing a great business both now and beyond uh, the current situation. Thanks for listening. Do you have a question you'd like our team of experts to answer? If you do, send your question to podcast at thebusinessbehindyourbusiness.com. To hear more from The Business Behind Your Business, don't forget to subscribe using your favorite podcast player. Or you can visit thebusinessbehindyourbusiness.com website.